Everyone, it's Brett from Misfit Media, and I'm sitting here with Ben Graves, who is the co-owner of a Brazilian steakhouse called Gauchos uh, in Manchester, New Hampshire. And he's got a really interesting story of, number one, how he got into the restaurant business, but also what he's been up to during COVID-19 to thrive on through during this really difficult time for most people. Uh, so without further ado, Ben, how are you doing? How are things going at the restaurant? Good, Brett. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, it's been a trying time, obviously, but uh, just trying to survive and thrive, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So obviously, I, I know you guys are new to the restaurant space. Uh, you guys bought the business about a year and a half ago, you said, right? Yeah. So my father and I bought the business about about uh, to the end of 2018. So about a year and a half now. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. And I know before you said you were in software, your dad didn't have any experience at all in the restaurant space. What led you guys to even want to move into the space to begin with? Stupidity. No, um, we yeah. were, my, my dad has uh, been in car sales and owned a car dealership his whole life. Um, I, since I graduated college, I, uh, been selling software. Um, so, you know, it really came around to, uh, uh, I knew somebody that was selling the restaurant, um, and, uh, he said, Hey, you, you want to buy a restaurant? And uh, so I didn't wake up one day just saying, hey, I want to buy a restaurant. It kind of just mm -hmm. you know, business, business opportunity presented itself. And, uh, honestly, I was kind of, you know, selling software day in and day out, you know, it got, got burnt out a little bit doing it for 10 years. Um, so yep. I decided, Hey, let's try something totally different. I want to try something on my own. And so I called up my dad and, and brought him in, but that's kind of how we got into it. it. It happened in about four weeks. We went from not even knowing about this restaurant, um, that it was for sale and, uh, to own wow. it. Yeah. Wow. Pretty quick. That's amazing. Uh, and it's, it's a Brazilian steakhouse, which, uh, I'm a huge fan of Brazilian food in general, so excited that you guys got into that business. I, I, yeah. I think. Um, have you been to Brazil, by the way? By any yeah, chance? So, so I haven't. Um, my father's yep. been there probably 20 plus times. Um, so oh, he, amazing! He had familiarity with a, a, a authentic Brazilian, you know, steakhouse down there, of course. So uh, got it. That was that, but I, I've never been now. Okay. Well, you you, you got to go now. Now that you're the owner of a Brazilian steakhouse, it's absolutely fantastic. Just can't find the time but <laughs> it, they not only they're really fun people but they have amazing food i would say like you know um so so you got in the business never had experience before uh a year and a half into it obviously uh covid hits uh you know what what's what's that been like for you guys the last month i mean obviously you guys are new to the space and now you're dealing with one of the biggest tragedies almost of all time in the restaurant space to many people right yeah just just my luck right um you know it's mm. funny we so we took over the restaurant um that it, in it at the time it wasn't uh, I would say wasn't succeeding. Right. Um, so we mm -hmm. spent the first year and a half, you know, I think we've worked every, just like most restaurant owners, right. We've worked literally every day. Um, our restaurants open 365 a year. Um, uh, yeah. before. So, you know, it was, it's been a tough grind. Right. And we finally turned the corner um, December, January, February, things were, were, we started finally making some money and it was like, yeah. wow, this is, this is going to get good. Um, and then COVID hits, like you said, um, and you know, for a few weeks leading up to our shutdown, you know, business really just kind of came to a screeching halt. Um, you know, and so, uh, when, when it did shut down, finally, there was a sense of like, whew, all right, thank God, at least we shut down because we were bleeding. We were probably bleeding more money, um, operating, uh, with very few customers than we were when we got shut down. But, yep. uh, obviously it was something we, I don't think many people would be prepared for it. We, as being so young in the business and, and struggling mm -hmm. to make our, make make money the first year um probably were less prepared um so you know i just remember you know it certainly was tough that first day when we said all right what are we going to do now um mm -hmm. you literally you know you go from working every day in the restaurant to literally having nothing the next you know next day yeah. um and so and the style of our restaurant right it makes a unique challenge because you know a lot of some restaurants can flip to takeout and, and delivery a lot easier than you know, we serve meat on a skewer, right? And it's piping hot coming out of the oven and it's, it's a, it's a show. It's not just the, the meal is yeah, part of it, but it's also, you know, where you have gauchos that walk around with their skewers and, and cut meat for, for folks right at the table. So how does that translate to, you know, you put it in a to-go box and you send it out. I mean, how does that work? Um, yep. So COVID itself was really difficult. Um, for us, it's probably even more difficult because it's not just like we can just flip our menu to, to take out and delivery. So that's where we kind of started with what we were doing now, but that's, it was really a, a difficult proposition at the time. Got it. Got it. So like you're saying, you guys are, I mean, big part of going to your restaurant is the experience of someone coming out with, with the stick of mead, uh, deciding what you want. That's, that's huge. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
translating the experience obviously during this time would be very difficult. And, and so you guys have transformed obviously into a butcher shop. Um, how have you guys, how has that transition worked for you guys? I mean, how did you get the, maybe the word out also to your customers? What's changed internally at the restaurant? Yeah. So, so I think, you know, again, when we got shut down, you know, we had the decision to make of, do we, do we do takeout, which we were going to do? Um, what do we do? And like middle of last year. So about, I think July, we did try to open up a butcher shop. Um, mm. You know, we serve a lot of different cuts of meat. So we said, Hey, why not, why not try to sell some of that meat in a retail setting? Um, so, you know, marinated meat, uh, steak, chicken, pork, things like that. Yeah. Um, and over the winter time, we literally went down to just a few customers a week that would come in. And when they would come in <laughs> to our butcher shop, we go, like, Oh shoot, we got to run out back and cut some meat for them. You know, we were very, it, it, it was, um, basically we're running a, a ghost shop, but, uh, Got essentially it. when we looked at the two options with COVID hitting, okay, let's do takeout. Um, and how's that going to translate? Like I mentioned, or we thought, Hey, we had a couple people call us and say, Hey, do you guys have chicken? We're, we're getting, we're, we can't find chicken in the supermarket right now. And so we kind of took that and we we're like, Hey, you know what? We, we, we have run a little bit of a butcher shop before. Let's, let's try to get, see if, people want chicken, we can get them chicken. You know, we have suppliers, you know, we, yeah. you know, they still want to deliver product to us. Um, let's do that. So, so we said, okay, let's, let's try that. So we kind of scrapped the takeout idea, um, which at first, you know, a lot of our staff was going to, we're going to have to hire them back to takeouts. So that kind of obviously hurt again, because we were telling them, Hey, we're going to do takeout. So that kind of stunk for a little while because we didn't know what this was going to be. So once we did that, we um, made that decision to let's just get rid of takeout and let's just do an online butcher shop. We uh we kind of went full full board with that. We we created an online store within a matter of maybe a couple hours um, through our website provider, and we started just going after it. So you know the only place that I, I knew how to start was Facebook. Um, Got it. Just doing social media marketing. Um, I figured it would be free to start. I could just do a couple posts. You know we have some followers uh, of Gauchos. I think we have like six thousand followers. So I said maybe we'll get a few. Yep. You people that feel bad for us that want to try, you know, hey, we're going to be grilling out or whatever. So we just started doing that. I just started posting um, weekly uh, or daily, I should say, and uh, did some weekly giveaways and specials. And we started with chicken. Um, you know, again, people wanted that chicken and they couldn't find it. They were having trouble. They were some supermarkets were limiting them of how many packages they could get of chicken when they went and things like that. Mm -hmm. so we said, we said, screw it. Let's just let's just give some away and see what happens and try to get some customers coming in to our online butcher shop. So we went from a, a restaurant one day to three days later, we had an online butcher shop um, serving all different types of meats. Um, and the other thing I think that was a big thing is we, we started off doing pickup only um, where people come in, you know, curbside pickup, but we realized that not even people want, people didn't want to leave their home. So we said, let's do some delivery. So um, I got a pretty big car, so I can, you know, I got a cooler. I can fit a lot of meat in there. So we started doing delivery, and that's really helped us. Um, wow. You know, propel us into what we're doing now. So you, are, you, are you personally doing some of these deliveries yourself? Yeah, right? I, I, deli I deliver <clears throat> five days a week. I probably wow. spend four hours a day delivering to, and I think, so when we started doing delivery, we were doing a 10-mile radius around our restaurant, of course, trying to keep it, keep it easy. Mm -hmm. We now deliver, and we're just doing about 10 towns locally here in New Hampshire. Yep. We, we now, you know, cause people just kept asking us, Hey, do you deliver to this town? It's like, well, we're already going to that town. Yeah. We'll go one more town over and then kind of just Got branch. It. Out. So now we deliver to over 60 towns. Wow. Um, we have routes, um, some as far as an hour to an hour and 15 minutes away from the restaurant just to get wow. out. Um, yeah. So it's been, you know, I grew up in a small town, in New Hampshire. Um, there was no supermarket, there was nothing. And so I started saying to myself, Hey, these people, Never mind getting to the supermarket and having a challenge of getting something there. Just getting to the supermarket for some of these people is really difficult. So while we have great success around our, you know, Manchester is the largest town and city in New Hampshire, I should say, with, you know, 125,000 people, we're actually having just as much luck, maybe if not more luck, with towns that have 3,000, 4,000 people in them um, because they don't have an easy way to get good quality meat. Um, and so that's been probably a huge key to our success. Yep. And I know not many other people are willing to drive. You know, I, I leave the restaurant at two o'clock every afternoon. I get home at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night because um, I'm driving, you know. Wow. Um, and, and I think people appreciate when the owner of the restaurant or owner of the butcher shop pulls up to their house and is delivering meat. Totally. Um, it's, been a, it's been a really good thing. And, and I think 
just from that perspective, it's been really great to, you know, the elderly lady or the family, you know, that's, that's got someone, you know, uh, immune system compromised, you know, being able to do this has really given us, given back to us and especially me a lot, you know, and they thank you. Mm-hmm. And you know, I didn't even, I didn't, I mean, I, I admit, I didn't do this starting off to say, Hey, I'm going to get a lot of people thanking me because they can't go to the store. It's not really what I, you know, we were trying to save our business. Absolutely. Um, but it's really turned into that. Um, and so that's been pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. I, um, we were speaking at a restaurant last week in LA and it was, it, it was the same kind of idea he had behind it. He's like, look, I think a lot of restaurant owners who are just shutting down, it, it's not, it's not a matter of staying open for your own business, but staying open for your community. Right. And people have to remember that, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I'm in Los Angeles and I'll tell you that all the markets have been totally rated the, the, I mean, you, you cannot get great meats. Like, like you mentioned here, you, you, you can't obviously get toilet paper anywhere. You can't get all kinds of things. Um, you know, and if you can be a provider for something like high quality meats like yourself, not only can you stay in business and do well, but people really appreciate that. And guess what? Guess who they remember after this whole tragedy? They remember you guys. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, sorry. which is amazing. No, it's cool. And, and it sounds like also for you guys, you've also expanded your clientele, right? For the most part. Yeah, I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's, it's what this has done for a business going forward. If, if we just were to close down and reopen, um, you, you know, it would be probably nowhere near what it, what I hope it will be when we do get to reopen. Um, yeah. you know, many people have told me, Hey, you know, this is amazing what you guys are doing for us. You know, we can't wait to come to your restaurant and give it a try. We never even heard of you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a whole other Avenue in, right. I mean, if I'm advertising for Brazilian steakhouse, you know, some people, well, what's that? I don't, you know, it, that might be scary to some people. Some people don't even know what a Brazilian steakhouse is. They might know it's a lot of yeah. meat, a lot of food, and it's too much for, the, you know, so there's a lot of things that, some <laughs> barriers there. Um, but when I can uh, advertise meat, you know, grill meat at home, chick, I mean, that's a lot easier to, 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 to grasp onto for them, right? And now that I have yeah. that, they want to come and, and pay their, you know, they, they tell me they want to come back and, and show their support to us when we do open back up. So, yeah, I've been able to reach a whole new clientele that I, I would have never probably been able to reach before. That's amazing. And and how do you obviously it's a, it's a, it's a, you run the business uh, with your father. Um, how do you guys split up your roles in the in the business? <laughs> so I so I handle uh, a lot of a lot of the operations um, back of the house, you know, ordering, you know, kitchen stuff, um, mm-hmm. and uh, marketing. Um, I do all the marketing of, of for the restaurant um, where my dad's. Right. You know, he's focused on more in front of the house, um, you know, things like that. So uh, that's kind of how we've split it up. Um, I do some, you know, back office and you know, I do every accounting. I do do all, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's, got it. it's uh, you know, working with your father, obviously, is got its challenges and it's, and it's definitely a good thing, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I um, me and my dad are on very business, very different businesses, but I could totally imagine that situation having the conversations because um you know, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, a lot of restaurant uh, owners that we speak to are fathers and businesses or family businesses. So it's, it's very traditional, I think, in this space. Um, I'm kind of curious, how, how did that conversation go originally when you asked your dad to get in the business with you? You know, I mean, obviously you were in software. He had never yeah. touched the restaurant space either. Convincing. I mean, I, I know if, if I was approached my dad about opening a restaurant with me together, it'd be a slightly different story because obviously I, I, I do restaurant marketing, but it's a whole different story when you're running the operations, obviously. Right. How did the conversation go for you guys? Well, I think we have like a mutual uh, free respect, but just, uh, you know, I think he's a pretty smart guy and I think he thinks I'm mm-hmm. probably a pretty smart guy too. So I wouldn't yeah. be asking for something that was, I mean, looking back on it, it was even crazier of an idea than, than yeah. what I thought it was. Um, you know, I, I had been a waiter in a restaurant before, so I had, you know, at least I've been around one a little bit, but yep. you know, we, we have 180 seats. Um, it's, 6,500 square feet. Um, you know, we have almost 40 staff members. So it's, it's not just a, you know, a little breakfast place or a little, little, you know, cafe yeah. type place. Right. Um, and it is a different dining style than, you know, what people are used to. So, oh you know, I, I think in a way we were naive. And so that it made the conversation a little bit easier. It was like, yeah, let's mm-hmm. just jump in and do it. Right. Where, um, if it was, Maybe you know, if we had a little bit more experience in something, there would have been a lot more questions asked. Um, yeah. I don't regret it at all, but it just, so the conversation, um, you know, at first he, he did, I think he might've said, you're, you know, you're crazy. You really want to do this. And then <laughs> yeah. like, looking at things, we said, 
you know, I think he turned into one of being like, yeah, we got to do this, Ben. Let's, let's, let's try it. Um, so, you know, I, I figure why not take a chance? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm young. What's the worst that happens to me? I totally. try to fail and I, you know, learn from it. So I love that. I love that. I mean, I, I hear people all the time saying, I, I don't know this, therefore I cannot do that. Well, you got to start somewhere, right? And obviously if, if you're buying a business like yourself, you're already buying into a successful business that's been around for, I mean, you said 15 years. Yeah, um, yeah. And how have you guys been running the business thus far? I mean, are you guys using the, obviously, um, still same suppliers that were there originally, same ingredients? How did that transition go over from buying the business? Yeah, so the unique thing is, um, Gauchos, like you said, has been around for 15 years in New Hampshire. Um, yep. Really the only Brazilian steakhouse in New Hampshire. Um, so we do have, uh, so there's some uniqueness. There's obviously a lot of uniqueness. That's why I, I bought the restaurant. I don't, I don't think I would have bought another plated sit down. There's, there's a lot Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Set, small margins. But so to answer your question, um, when we took over, we retained the whole staff, um, same recipes. Um, really what we did is we gave the staff more freedom. They had, they said they didn't have as much freedom to kind of create their own creations and try different things. Um, you know, mm. Brazilian steakhouse, as I'm sure as you know, Brett, you know, we have our salad bar, we have a hot side dishes. So there's different, different items there that we kind of give our kitchen staff the flexibility now to, to try different things. And, you know, it's yeah. amazing when you, when you empower some people uh, to try different things, one, they take the ownership, right. And, and they, yes. they care more about it, but two, a lot of great dishes and new recipes have come out of it. And, you know, so that's been really great. So, but the other, the other cool thing is a lot of our staff have been there for a long time. Um, you know, our average tenure of our staff is, is over four years. We have some staff members that have been there for 15. That's um, amazing. That's yeah. Really so amazing. It's been really, yeah. So that was really, again, we didn't, we didn't really take that into account when we, when we started. I mean, yeah, it was nice to have some familiarity, but how important that, that is um, when buying a restaurant, uh, you know, it's been tremendous. So, so that's been great. So we didn't really change a lot when it comes to that. You know, we just try to make the dining experience and really the, the customer experience better. Um, you know, obviously, we, we feel like we're treating our staff as, as good as we can to, to keep them happy. Um, you know, a lot of customers said, yeah, your staff seems, they seem more motivated. They seem more, more into it versus before, you know, just going through the motions uh, previously. So that, that's been great. And I think that just shows, you know, when, when, when people care and, and they're, they're giving it their all, um, customers notice that. Um, so Absolutely. You know, we increase the quality. Obviously, we're known for our meats, so we 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 increase the level of our quality of all, all of our meats um, right away. Um, we knew that we had to do something to try to get people to come back, um, and you, you know, hopefully, give us another chance. There there was some some customers that said, "Oh yeah, I'm not going to try you guys," and then they come back and they go, "This is a lot better than the last time." So, Amazing. so really, that's all we. I mean, that's really what we did. We just worked hard every day. You know, as as one of the owners, you know saying hi to people when they come in, going over to tables, talking to them, trying to learn about our customers. You know, I always say when we took over, we would see, you know, regular customers. We may have had two or three that you'd see once a month <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, because of our style of restaurant, we are a little different. We're a special occasion place, you know, totally. coming in every day, you know, but I knew we had to get regulars to come back as often as possible. Um, yeah. So, that's what we just did. We just said, you know, we, we put in a rewards program. We did all these different things to try to get people that want to come back uh, yeah. more often. And honestly, I think just talking to people and being there, um, you know, I bartend some nights, some nights I'm, I, you know, I've served, I've literally done everything in the restaurant now. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, you know, wash dishes, whatever you got to do. Right. But I yeah. think when, when, when my staff sees me doing that, number one, they start falling in line. Right. And, and they start, yeah. uh, we're going to, we're going to go all in. But I think the other thing is obviously customers start seeing it too. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many times where, you know, customers would talk to the servers and say, oh, who's, the, you know, that, that guy's, he's really great. And then the server goes, oh yeah, it's one of the owners. And they literally just kind of almost fall out of their chair going like, oh, that's, that's really cool. So that's amazing. You know, what we've done, long story short, is just work hard and be present in the business. I, I mean, yeah, that's, that's really what we did. That's the best. That's the best. I mean, I, I can speak from experience too. If, if I'm at a restaurant and the owner comes up to me, table touches our table, has a cultural conversation with us, or someone mentions the owner is doing what you're doing, it goes such a long way with the customer. I, I think someone can really appreciate that. I think also someone in your situation to, to dive in from being in the software space for over 10 years to being a restaurant owner and doing all this, 
I mean, that's fantastic. That's so cool. And it sounds like obviously you, you fully embrace it. It sounds like you fully love it. Even during this time, you, you guys are thriving really well, which is amazing. Um, I love what you said also about um, asking your, your employees uh, about the situation at the restaurant. You know, they didn't feel free to make their own creations. You know, big, big thing I always promote at our company and I always tell my employees all the time is, is tell me what you, uh, you want to stop doing, start doing, and continue doing. What, what should we as a business change, if anything, right? Because I think as an owner, um, sometimes you, you're looking at too many things at once that you, you can't see the fine details and, and where you really need to be paying attention, paying attention to, where your employees really can. And so, and I think that's amazing, giving your employees ownership of making their own creations. It's a lot more fun, right? It's a lot more exciting. Makes, job, makes their job a, a lot more entertaining to show up to. Uh, and something to look forward to. So I, th I think that's amazing what you guys are doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also sounds like your employees are happy overall though, because you guys sound like a really low employee churn for the most part. I mean, I, a lot of our clients, that's, that's a big situation, a big problem, but you guys seem like you don't really have that. Yeah. It's, you know, people all the time say, you know, restaurant business is so hard to find employees and, and I'm, I'm not saying it isn't, um, but we've been extremely lucky. Uh, I mean, out of the core uh, 16 employees that we had when we took over, um, we have 16 of them still. Um, wow. And so we, you know, we've expanded, we've grown, our, our sales are up quite a bit from, they were <laughs> from the restaurant side. Yeah. So we've added, you know, we doubled our staff, but yeah. we still have all those same core folks. Um, and so, you know, they, they're all friends. <laughs> they're, you know, obviously they've been working together for a while now. And so um, yeah. that's been, been a great thing. And, and I think continuity, whenever you take, especially when you don't know what you're doing, when you take over or something, um, you know, you need to rely on those people. Certainly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't know if you, if you mind sharing, you know, specific numbers out, we can go work off percent percentages if you'd like, but as far as sales, let's do this. As far as sales were when you bought the business to where they are to the peak and to where they are now during COVID, can you give us some kind of rough outline of, of the growth and where you guys have ended up right now? Yeah. Yeah. So, so from, uh, from the restaurant standpoint, so I'll kind of start when we took over, um, you know, it was on track in 18 to do about, 860, $870,000, just a high, high level. Mm -hmm. um, in 2019, we got it up to almost 1.2. Um, Amazing. So it was, yeah, over 30% growth in one wow. year. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, you know, it's cool. You know, it was, it was motivating, right? When you look at the numbers and, hey, you know, we're trying to beat last June and they did 50,000, we're at 90, right? I mean, it's like, wow, yes. that's crazy. And, and that, for me, that's what motivates me is like, and obviously the second year was going to get harder, right? When you start getting the bigger numbers, it gets even harder. Yes. But it, it was really cool. So we did grow the business quite a bit in the first year. And, um, you know, our run rate uh, up through, you know, let's just say end of February, because March kind of got messed up here with COVID. Um, mm -hmm. But what, yeah, we were tracking probably one over 1.3. Um, wow. Which, which was really start for us where we need to be to start, you know, making, making money for the restaurant and, and, yes. and, and being in a healthy standpoint, uh, obviously we all know we work on small margins and things like that. Um, so at 900,000, the restaurant definitely was not sustainable. Um, yeah. you know, getting over a million dollars was kind of my goal the first year. And, and we definitely surpassed that by a lot. So that was kind of where we got up to the peak. We we're kind of on that run rate. Um, obviously with, with COVID hitting, um, you know, we, we are not doing anything on the restaurant side. Like we talked about, we're doing our online butcher shop. And even that, right now our sales are down from, from that run rate, roughly 10% at most. Oh, wow. Yeah. So not bad. I would say it's pretty good. Um, considering yeah, not bad. Um, we've, almost done as, we've almost done as much business in one month as we, we, we were. So That is fantastic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, killer. Yeah. We went, I, I always tell people we went from having two customers a week in the butcher shop. Now we've had uh 1200 this past month. So, and oh I've my spent, God. And I spent, I have spent a little money on marketing on Facebook. I did boost a couple, you know, I've done the ads, but I've spent totally. today I spent up to, I think I'm now $210 in total. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And what about your costs? Are your costs dropped as well? For so the business. <laughs> Yes and no, right? I mean, like anyone, I, I'm st I still have rent to pay. I still have utilities, you know, insurance. All of those bills haven't changed, right? Um, uh, you know, butcher shop, you know, now I'm just protein heavy. 
completely. I used to be heavy protein. Now I'm really yeah. heavy protein. So my food cost has gone up. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we, you know, we're trying to be competitive with supermarkets and others too. I mean, we're not, we're not trying to take advantage of people in this situation. Yeah. So our, our food cost has gone way up um, with it. labor and rent. You know, it hasn't changed a ton. I, I think it has maybe it's improved a little bit. Um, our margin our you know, our, our gross profit, but it, it yeah. hasn't changed a ton currently. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, and I know you said, so on Facebook, you guys are running ads uh, to get this word out. Um, when you guys are selling your meats, are, are, are you, um, is there any kind of follow-up process with the customers? Are you guys collecting emails or phone numbers on these customers that purchase from you guys? Yeah. So, so two things, uh, when we bring them meat, I always hand them a, we have a letter that we created, you know, with a coupon, right. For them to reorder, you know, thank nice. you. Well, bounce back uh, offer. Yeah, exactly. We, uh, we do Very collect cool. all their information. We have all their, you know, they, cause they're ordering online. So we have all their content information, email, um, so we, we have started and we'll do more as we get, as we figure out what our timeline and strategy is around op- reopening the restaurant too, we'll be yep. able to remarket to them um, that way. So, you know, I have a thousand new um, folks that I didn't have their email addresses before. And now I have their email addresses and their customers of, of our restaurant, right? And our butcher shop. So I think that will obviously remarketing to them will be huge as we reopen. But I mean, that again, that's an added benefit that we didn't really think about when we started the butcher shop, but oh, I, think, yeah. I think it's a, you know, it's a, a nice thing for us to have in our back pocket too. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I know we, we spoke initially like uh, in July of last year, briefly. Um, yeah. That's, that's amazing though. What, what you guys have done over this, over this time period. I mean, again, first ever in the restaurant space, you grow the business by 30%. You're then faced with COVID, which was one of those difficult situations a restaurant owner could ever deal with. Uh, and you guys are still thriving on through this. I mean, I've, I've talked to plenty of restaurants that are down almost 80% in sales. And I think the thing about the situation is I love how um, active you are about, about fixing problems, it sounds like, or, or diving into new um, opportunities, right? Because it's easy to feel sorry for yourself and sorry for your business when things like this happen. We're all in the exact same boat, right? But it sounds like you guys didn't really let it phase you guys even for a minute. I mean, this is, these are fantastic numbers. Yeah. I, um, really cool. I was, I was going to add, you know, Brett, I think it just goes down to since I graduated college and even, you know, high school, I, I worked right. And, and literally yep. there hasn't been a day I haven't had a job or been in between a job. You know, if I changed jobs, which I did think once or twice, you know, I was working, you know, stopped on Friday and worked on Monday. Right. Yes. Um, and literally I just remember sitting there on that Monday night after all the customers had left and we were shut down, um, you know, back in March and said like, what are we going to like? I, I, there's literally, I don't know how to just sit at home or how just to not do anything. And yeah. so it didn't even really, you know, we thought about takeout for literally two days and then it was like, all right, that's a stupid, let's think about butcher shop. And it was just, let's go. So it just, yeah, I, I hear you. And I think it's just, I don't think I would have been good at sitting at home. And so now having something to do every day and, 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 yes. and pretty successful, it's just kind of second nature now. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw you an idea that might be kind of interesting for you guys just right now on the spot. You know, <laughs> so we're, we're crazy. I mean, we're so yeah. Crazy. Okay, so we had a, I had an interview last week. Uh, so the a client of ours called Red Cork Bistro, and he's doing these um, date night specials where he'll, he'll he'll have an appetizer, an entree, a bottle of wine, and dessert that he's doing these these deals with. Yeah. Um, what he's also followed up with is um, he's having his bartenders actually do like a Zoom happy hour call explaining the drinks that are in these date night boxes. Something that might be kind of cool for you guys is after someone makes a purchase, you know, have their email and phone number, AKA you could probably find them on Facebook through ads, or yep. you can simply send them an email link or a text link to a Facebook live or a zoom happy hour live, where now you can be describing the meats that they may have picked up, describing how you can season them, how you can cook them, uh, what they're, what they should be prepared with, what vegetables go well with them. Um, might be really cool as a follow-up process. <laughs> I think it's awesome. No, I, yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a great idea. I, yeah, no, I'm going to definitely, I'm going to work that into our, our yeah. plan. So <laughs> kind of cool. One um, of my plans is one of my next steps I'm going to take this is we're going to do a uh, meat, meat boxes. So people have been asking us about this, mm-hmm. you know, like a monthly subscription, right. Or a weekly subscription I love uh, it. service. And so with that, there's going to be some surprises in the box when someone opens up, right? They might get some duck or what, you know, something that may is a little, you know, something mm. out of ordinary. 
So to that point, I've already started to put together like recipes that people are giving us and then doing something exactly like that for those kind of those things. So yeah, it, that's a great idea. Wait, that, that is amazing though. Surprise yeah. Meatbox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because people, you know, I'm going to wow. have some staples in there too, you know, so that you're not going to just get like, oh, I don't like anything in this box. But yes. you know, my thing is, you know, I think especially people at home with families and kids or whatever they have, right? Being able to open something up and say like, okay, we don't know exactly what's in this box. Let's look at it. And, and maybe there's a recipe or two in there and they can cook it together as a family. Yeah. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. And, and uh, I've already talked to a lot of our customers and like, oh, that would be amazing. And if I can get some monthly recurring revenue from that um, yes. like service, deliver right to your door, I think that'd be pretty cool. That is the coolest thing ever. I would, if you guys ship to California, I sign me right up. I'm, I'm already. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to figure out my shipping and then I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up on that. That is amazing. And so it's, it sounds like, okay, so not only are you guys doing well, but now you're creating new business models, uh, new opportunities to make more money out of the situation, expand your customer base. Do you feel like, I mean, is this something that you maybe would continue even after COVID potentially? Yeah, so, so, I mean, obviously we start doing pretty well, right? You start, your mind starts running all over the place about, yeah, oh, we can open a butcher shop, you know, we could just do all this stuff. But, you know, I, I bring it back to earth a little bit and say, yeah, absolutely. We're going to, we're going to do this as long as we can. I, I think, I hope that the demand of people getting, you know, high quality meats delivered right to their door um, is always going to be there. And I think in the new yeah. world going forward, I still think there's going to be, you know, the avenues for a lot of people to, to do different services like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my plan is, you know, it'll be challenging, right? I always talk with our staff still today to this day, you know, we're, we're there all doing this meat business, but we're gonna have to open the restaurant back up at some point. And that's yeah. going to be a bit of a challenge, right? Um, how do you keep one thing that's going up like that? How do you keep that going? Well, then trying to have something else because right now it's pretty easy. You know, we can focus on one yeah. thing, but that will change. But yeah, absolutely. We're going to try to run with this. Um, you know, I want to be known as, you know, the, 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 the people that deliver meat all throughout New Hampshire and, and, and other areas. Um, you know, I think it's a great thing that we're doing and I want, I want to keep doing it. Especially if you guys were the only Brazilian steakhouse in your area, which I know you mentioned earlier with us, uh, you, you guys have such an awesome opportunity to just completely crush this market, to be the unique ones in the market that not only can provide the customers with an amazing experience at the store level, but also be delivering meats all, all over the place, right? Um, you guys, are, are you the kind of concept that has the little cards where if you flip it, it's red, stop, and then green, go? Yeah, it's right. a very, very sophisticated concept, but yeah, we're the, yeah. we're the <laughs> yeah. stop, stoplight people, yeah. That's the best. That's the absolute best. You know, it's so funny that I told you my, my girlfriend's Brazilian, but she's actually vegetarian, which, <laughs> yeah. which is insane to me because I was imagining when we first started dating, she'd be cooking all these amazing Brazilian meats, but it's only been vegetables for me for the most part, which is, which is <laughs> great. <laughs> um, something would be really cool for you guys too, just kind of pop in my head, is have you guys ever done anything with QR codes? Any kind of marketing with QR codes or anything? We, we, we haven't. Um, so no, I, I would say we haven't. Okay. So here's another idea that well, I think we, you guys should throw into as soon as you guys reopen. Okay. Is now you have this new uh, subscription model or you have this surprise meat boxes or whatever the case, right? Yep. You've now opened up a new revenue stream for you guys. As soon as you guys do open up the restaurant again, though, what you can do with these little cards on the cards, which obviously green means more food red means stop. You can also put QR codes, right? Now these QR codes will be really cool for you guys because you can set it up in such a way that if someone takes out their phone's camera, whether it's iPhone or Android, they can simply scan that QR code with their phone. You can then direct them to a page of which now you can capture that contacts, first name, last name, email, phone number in exchange for joining your VIP club. And your VIP club can be an introduction to this subscription box. Hey, love our meats, love the restaurant experience here. Why not take it home? Of which then you can sell someone to now join your subscription model. So now you're turning in-store customers into also subscription service customers. And it's going to be free leads for you. I mean, why not? I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Killer, right? I, I mean, again, that's why we started the butcher shop last year, right? We had this idea of, hey, we have customers in the restaurant. Why not yep. have them? Why not? When they come to the restaurant... If they like the meat, they can go grab it right out of the butcher shop, you know, and different oh, yeah. sauces and things like that. So it's just expanding that and using technology in a little better way to, to do that, right? It's yeah, awesome. absolutely. And, I mean, I mean, I'd say why not, right? There's there's so many restaurants I think that for me, like I, I love hot sauces, 
And so if I'm at a restaurant and they have a special hot sauce, I usually always buy it. Uh, I'm, I'm the first to ask for it or, or buy it. Right. Um, yep, yep. And it's funny. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't think of the name right now, but there's someone found out. I like really, really like hot sauces and, and they send us a, some kind of hot sauce as a promotional item. Whoever they are, shout out to them. They, they're killing it because they, I'm going to send you our hot sauce. Right. I'd love yeah, to have make, your hot sauce. All right, we make a killer hot sauce in house. So yeah, I would, I would love to try. I, I need to <laughs> expand my collection. But awesome. anyway, um, I, I'm so glad you guys are doing well. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really notable and, and admirable to see that you're new to the space. Again, you've grown the business by 30%. You guys are doing well during COVID and you're innovating during this time. Uh, I think so many restaurant owners often get stuck in this is the way we do things. That's how it's done, period. Um, you know, I, something I, I mentioned to someone on the call once, which uh, it made them really think critically about what they're doing is they said, you know, Brett, I, I have 20 years experience in this space. And I asked them, do you have 20 years experience in that space or have you done the same thing 20 years in a row? And it's right. something to think about because people, people get stuck in the motion of things. And it sounds like obviously because you knew the space, knew, knew the, sorry, knew the space, you, you have a fresh eye perspective on it and you're innovating, which is fantastic. I mean, clearly the restaurant before was in business for 15 years. You came in with a one year, 30% growth. And I think sometimes it's, it's really important to reevaluate what you're doing, how you're doing it. And again, to ask your employees, what should we start stopping and continue doing? Because it sounds like you made a big difference and that's really cool to see. Um, I think in the restaurant space, it, that's hard, right? I mean, it's, it's, especially if you're working it day in and day out, it's yeah. so hard to step back and, you know, not work in your business, but work on your business. Yeah. Um, and, you know, be, we were kind of forced to with COVID and, and I guess yeah. that's a silver lining is COVID made, made us do that where before, you know, yeah, we were just trying to work, work in the business every day. And, and so, yeah, yeah, I think it's a, that's a silver lining with this whole, whole thing. So Absolutely. I hope other restaurant owners have had the chance to do that too, with having a little time maybe to, Absolutely. to fix, you know, to look at their business. Absolutely. And Ben, for anyone who maybe is in your area and if they do want to order uh, either some surprise meats or the meat box or select some items that they want to order uh, for takeout or delivery, uh, what would be the, the best place to drive them? Would it be your website? Yeah, yeah. So they just go to our website, uh, gauchosbraziliansteakhouse.com uh, backslash store is, is our online butcher shop. They can go there. They can put in whatever they want, order it, and, and we'll bring it to them depending on where they are, um, you know, that same Perfect. day when they order it so yeah got it cool guys so if you're seeing this video and you want to make order some meats uh go to that website uh, i'll put it on, on also the section of this video below and the podcast um and if you do order you might have the the um the opportunity to actually meet them you might be making those deliveries yourself right <laughs> so I, I love delivering to people so yeah i'd love i'd love to love to see you absolutely all right well ben appreciate your time uh such an amazing story and uh we'll we'll um, be in touch real soon then all right have sounds great thanks for Alrighty. Cheers. Cheers.